Hey, I'm Paul Castro Jr. and you're watching Pop Dust. Hi, and uh, welcome to Pop Dust Presents. I'm your host, Ben Tomiulo, and we're here with actor Paul Castro Jr. Uh, how you doing, Paul? I'm good. How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming in to, uh, to do this interview with us. Oh, my pleasure. Seriously. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, just running over some of your, your credits for our viewers. Uh, you've appeared in TV shows like Law & Order SVU and The Blacklist, back when The Blacklist was still good, <laughs> and um, Limitless, yeah. you were on the list. How was that? Uh, it's pretty awesome. It's cool, very, very cool show. Uh, unfortunately, it's not running anymore, so that's, uh, but it's on Netflix, so. It was a cool, yeah, check it out, check out Limitless on Netflix, Paul's in it. Yeah. Uh, you've been in some uh, some feature films, you were yep. in like the, the Skeleton Twins, right? Yeah, I have a small part in Skeleton Twins. Which is which is cool, right? Yeah, uh, God, that was, uh, well I mean, it's Kristen Wiig, Bill Hader, Ty yeah. Burrell. Uh, you can't really you can't really go wrong with that cast. Yeah, we've heard we've heard some uh, some good stories about Bill Hader from people who've been in here doing interviews. Do you have? Yeah, any? I mean, I I was only on set for I think two days, two days or a day, two days, and the whole time just hanging out with him, he's just telling stories about SNL, like just the whole process. He's like super chill, like you know you have people always say like you think comedians are funny people are always trying to be funny. He's just he's just he's just funny being himself not trying to be funny, you know what I mean? And uh, just really down to earth dude, he just like, <laughs> marches to the beat of his own drum, just like, you know, it's comfortable in his own skin. Uh, yeah, he just, he, I learned a lot just from like being around him. That's awesome, yeah. so, uh, and you, you do a lot of like voice acting yourself, don't you? Yeah, I do. I mean, that's how I, that's how I survive in New York City. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and you're from New Jersey originally, right? Yeah. And you've been in New York City for a while? I came to New York. Well, I grew up in Brooklyn until I was like seven or eight, and my family moved to Jersey. And then I've been back in the city since 2011, so was that five years? Right. 2012, 2011, yeah. And yeah. it seems like you've been doing a good job of making, making the dream happen. Yeah? Trying, trying. <laughs> I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. So, um, I want to talk to you about your next big thing, which mm. is called Next Big Thing, right? Totally. All right, uh, and what can you tell us about that? So it's a TV show that I created. I created the concept and I've been writing it with a, a friend of mine from my hometown as well as uh, my girlfriend and partner, my co-writer. Um, and it's basically a TV show about a bunch of friends, millennials in their 20s, navigating through life like every other show. But, um, but the, the catch with this is they all are obsessed with video games. They're all gamers and they all hang out in this local game shop where there's board games, card games, video games, tournaments, everything. And it's run by this uh, shop owner who's basically been like a second father to all of them. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. it's uh, it's the league meets It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia meets uh, New Girl. So. And with like a Dungeons and Dragons element too? Oh uh, yeah, well there's, there's a whole episode of Dungeons and Dragons that we plan to do as well as anything else. And the cool thing about what we're trying to do with this show and uh, Samit, who's obviously part of you guys' company, he's uh, been helping us out, he's been a producer on the project, um, is that we're really being authentic. So like, it's cool, I don't know if anyone likes The Big Bang Theory, I mean, it's a cool show, but um, I feel like it's very like, uh, glazing over geek life, and like, you mentioned Batman or Superman, and people are like, oh my god, they like geeks, you know what I mean? <laughs> and like, we're really trying to like, get nitty gritty with it. You're trying to like, do the deep, the geek deep dive. Yeah, like we're talking about like, Final Fantasy, and, and like, Naruto and oh, like we're yeah. getting we're getting knee deep in like anime gamer culture. We're not we're not shying away from it. Oh, I like that a lot. And it's a it's a live action show, right? Not animated. No, it's not animated. It's single camera, so very much like it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Curvy yeah. enthusiasm, you know. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so we plan on uh, we've been talking to a lot of brands about it, um, different production companies who are interested in networks, and uh, we're trying to find the right home right now. But it's um, you know any anyone who's been in the position of creating a show or having an idea knows there's a difference between like content control and like creative control yep. and like uh, what you want to sacrifice and what your goals are for it. So we're dealing with that right now. But um, it's just I mean that's a that's a good stage to be in though. Yeah, it's good problems. It's, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, good problems. And uh, you're also working on a uh, a feature film coming up. Uh, yeah, it's called within the next year or something, right? Yeah, yeah. We've uh, we've been writing this for like four years now, and we're at really a point where we've been. Uh, just uh, collaborating with different creatives and talking to a lot of big directors. Um, it's called Barbie Boy. 
Yeah. Tell us about Barbie Boy. And that sounds really interesting. Yeah, so it's about a, uh, a family dealing with their 14-year-old's uh, uh, obsession with Barbie dolls. And he's a, a young boy, so it's um, uh, it has to do a lot with like masculinity and obviously gender. Yeah. And, um, it's uh, it's a, it's a, it's it's a real close to home story in a way. It's very it's very real. Um, and I don't know. It's uh, I think it's going to be one of those films that when it's made, people are going to like really be open to that I, that idea of like. What, what does it mean to be a man? Are you trying to get it to be like a, like a big studio film or like an indie? You know, it's tough because it, it all depends. I think just by nature, it fits into more of an indie category just because of the subject matter. It's more of like a Sundancey film, as people yeah, would say. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, you know, but it really depends. We want to get some cool people who we have in mind uh, to play some of these roles, get like some stars attached that we, uh, yeah, of course. we would plan on doing. And, you know, it really depends on what happens from there, or what director gets on board for it, and what capacity we can produce it in. But, um, I don't, I, you know, I, is it realistic that this is going to be a blockbuster film? Hell no. You know, what I mean? <laughs> so, like, obviously we have. Uh, yeah, but it could, be, could could go like the way of like Paranormal Activity, where it was oh, like, man. you know, it's the thirty thousand dollar movie blows up. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, I probably won't be in it, which is probably, you know, what I mean, uh, it's kind of a goal. But you know, <laughs> they'll replace me with. Um, Ryan Gosling. Oh, are, 20, are you are old. you gonna play the the Barbie boy? No, no. So the, I won't be playing fourteen. I know I look young. Yeah, but you, I, yeah it's not a bad problem. Yeah, I'm not. No, I I would. There's an older brother uh, character in the film who returns home to the mil from the military, and he's kind of thrusted into this whole uh, world again, where his brother is still playing with Barbie dolls. So it's no longer like uh, this fad that he had growing up as like people would say like oh he's just playing with dolls he'll grow out of it this is like something where he's about in middle school about to enter high school and this is still something that's going on and you know the whole family is either they're okay with it or some people are concerned because kids are bullying this kid at school and he's not just a kid who plays with barbie dolls he's also extremely overweight and effeminate so he's a target you know what I mean? He's a target by these boys at school, and so it's it's a very complex film, and I think it's going to hit a lot of a lot of the chords and heartstrings that people are going to be like, "Wow, that's that's still going on today." I know all about what it's like to be the overweight high school freshman who <laughs> plays with Barbie dolls. Um, no, uh, speaking of high school, we have like a we have like a pop dust exclusive special report that you played football in high school before uh, <laughs> before moving on to uh, uh, to yeah. more artistic pursuits. I also yeah. played football in high school. Yeah. Uh, how how was your football your high school football experience? Well, I played. I only played football for two years, so let's be clear about that. I only played it for two years. Played my freshman year, my sophomore year, and I was actually pretty good. Uh, I played. As d despite like what you would think typically, I mean, high school is like one of those things you could play freaking any position as long as you're half decent at it. Yeah. I played defensive end and then I played nose tackle or nose guard, which you would think like, why is the kid who's 120 <laughs> pounds playing nose guard? But I would just like slip yeah, right in the, between the, the center and the guard. Move, yeah. And so I did that for two years and then I got kind of hurt and then I did, I actually did track for basically all high school. I did pole vaulting, which is another one of those things where it's like, why is the kid who's five foot five and 110 pounds doing pole vaulting? But, uh, so I did that for four years. Yeah, it was subverting athletic tropes here, Paul Castro Jr. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Rare and Rockets represent. So, so when did you start doing the uh, the like acting thing? I it's one of those things where, you know, I didn't at high school. If you would have asked me like what it, when one play was, I couldn't tell you anything. I probably could just tell you Romeo and Juliet, that's like Shakespeare. I, that's probably the only thing I tell you. Uh, I, I don't think I went to any of our school plays or anything, but then I went to college and I was going to do pre-med because like, I was like, yeah, I want to make money, obviously, you know, let's, let's do yeah, the thing that I want to make money with. Around. Yeah. And then I was like, wow, this sucks. This is horrible. Like I'm having no fun. And then somehow in a weird way, got to like a sketch comedy group in college, just like found my way into it. And then from there I got the bug. I auditioned for a play and it just kind of. That's, yeah. Things. Where did you go to college? Well, I went to I went to Monmouth University in Jersey for a couple of years, and then I transferred to NYU, and that's where I kind of really learned how to like do stuff. And, I had a feeling you were gonna say NYU. Yeah, <laughs> the rest of New York City, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's one of those things where you start start doing acting at NYU, and then you just end up in New York acting, right? Well, I love New York because it's like I, I mean I've been to LA, and I mean there's two it, New York right now. 
And I think any actor will tell you this who's like at this stage of the game where you're still hustling every day for your life for a job. Um, it's it There's so much TV, so much film. And I think actually the better film is being done in, in uh, New York, like the independently produced. I, you I know, agree with you. It's like the stories that have come out, like every project that I've been a part of that's been like an indie, so to speak, even though they're getting theatrical distribution, it's been like good stories. It's not just like hot guys and girls hanging out by the pool in California. Which is great. Yeah, you know, which is awesome. Story-driven narrative feature films are totally becoming rarer and rarer. And yeah. They truly are a gem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I love New York. Yeah, definitely. Uh, anything, any, any other projects you want to talk about? Anything you want to highlight? Uh, I just, uh, just did a film like a couple weeks ago with um, Michael Madsen from Kill Bill. And Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs, or yeah, so. Good old ear cut off. Yeah. My favorite. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Blonde, I believe is who he played, right? Yeah. So one of them. One and of uh, Ed Asner, the guy from Up, he's in Santa. it. Santa. Santa, yeah. Elf. And an Elf, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Danny Flaherty, who was just in a cool movie called Goat. Uh, I don't know, it's like the, the big alpha. Um, fraternity movie that just came out with Nick Jonas and James Franco was in it. Um, I must have overlooked that one. He's in The American. So we just did that film. I had a really cool part. It's, uh, what was that called? The Garden Left Behind. Okay. So I just wrapped on that like a couple weeks ago. Um, it's about this uh, transgender woman going through the process from being a man to be a woman and struggling with trying to survive in New York City and not being able to uh, be accepted for being a, a trans woman. So it's a really cool project. Um, that's coming up. I did a film that's on Netflix called People, Places, Things with Jermaine Clement, Regina Hall, and Jessica Williams. Oh, yeah. That, that I'm really proud of. It's a, uh, it's like a dark comedy. Well, yeah, what was that, was that called? People, Places, People, Things? People, Places, Things, People, yeah. Places, Things on Netflix. Check it out. Watch that. That's a good movie. I'm proud of that. So, um, did you know, a bunch of random things. Do I, You've probably heard my voice if you watch Nick Jr. or Nick Tunes a lot. So, um, yeah. Uh, there, I'll be. <laughs> I do a voice for this. Uh, it's gonna be. I think it's on Nick, Teen Nick, or one of those things called this TV show called Nella Knightley, and I play this really obnoxious bird. <laughs> it's, animation. it's gonna be like a SpongeBob type of thing. So that's awesome. That'll be out probably in like December. But yeah, just you know, hustling. Yeah, awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here on Pop Dust first. Paul Castro Jr. is hustling, and he <laughs> and he is. Not, not only does he have the next big thing, but he is the next big thing. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. That's right. Um, yeah. Any, any impressions, PJ, that you want to... Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, ...create your presence with? Thank you! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> it's like the first one. That's, that's, that's unfavorable. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have the whole Bernie supporters in here as well. So oh, okay, so that's uh. When we all come together, <laughs> the two percent of all four percent percent. <laughs>